The iterator design pattern is a behavioral design pattern that allows clients to traverse various different collections without having to know about the collection's underlying representation. So what happens is the client asks whatever collection it's dealing with, hey, give me back an iterator that will allow me to traverse you. And then the client simply uses that iterator to traverse the collection. So in this demo, we are going to leverage the iterator pattern to traverse various different collections. So here in this demo, I have this iterate function and this takes in a team. And a team has players that we iterate over in this for loop and we simply write out each player on the team to the console. So digging into this, let's look at team. Again, that simply has an array of players. And then if we look at player, that simply has a first name, last name, and points per game. And we write that out to the console. So back up to the program.cs where we put this all together. We initialize this team. This is the Phoenix Sun, so kind of dealing with basketball here. And then we simply iterate over this team and write out each player to the console. So let's run this and see it in action. There we go, simply write out these three players. I didn't put the whole team, just three for an example. So the problem we have here that we're gonna solve with the iterator pattern is that I want this iterate function to support other collections too, not just team. I want it to support another collection that also has a collection of players inside of it. So for example, let me add another class over here. And this is going to represent the entire league. So we'll call it league. And the league is just going to have a collection of teams. So just an array of teams. So now back in our program.cs, let's initialize our league. And this is the NBA dealing with basketball again. And let's pass in all of our teams to the league. So a new array of teams. And right now we just have the Phoenix Suns. And let me add another team too, just to enhance this demo. And I'll just grab this off camera real quick. There we go. Added the Golden State Warriors as another team. Let me put that in our league. So add that to our team's collection. And now getting back to the problem that we want to solve with the iterator pattern. So ultimately, I want to iterate over all of the players in our league. So really, I want to pass the NBA to this iterate function. But at the moment, we can't do that because this iterate function expects a team to be passed in. So ultimately what we need to do is we need to update this iterate function to be able to take in either a team or a league. And then the iterate function can get an iterator for whatever object, either a team or a league that gets passed into this function and then use that iterator to iterate over the collection of players. So if we wanna pass in either a team or a league to this iterate function, then this function is gonna to have to depend on some kind of interface that team and league implement. So let's create that interface that we can depend on. And really what this iterate function wants to do is iterate over a collection of players. So we'll call this interface an I player collection. So now that we have this interface, we haven't really done anything with it, but let's use it and depend on it. So this iterate function is gonna get a I player collection passed in. So let's reference that. And then our league is going to implement the I player collection interface as well as the team class. So now if we go back to our program.cs, we can successfully pass in our league of NBA as well as either of our teams. There we go, no issues there. But now if we get into this iterate function, we're trying to access the player's property on an I player collection, which obviously doesn't exist. So we might be tempted to add that player's array to the I player collection, but we can't do that because even though our team class has an array of players, our league class doesn't, it has an array of teams. So our league class and our team class are gonna have to be traversed quite differently in this iterate function. So really all this iterate function can do is ask the collection, how do I traverse you? So in other words, the iterate function is gonna get back an iterator from the player collection that the iterate function can use to traverse the player collection. So let's create an interface for our various iterators that we're gonna to have to create. We can just call this the I player iterator. So the iterate function is going to use a player iterator to traverse through whatever collection it has. So it's gonna need some helper functions to do that. It's gonna need a way to tell the iterator to go to the first player so this can just be a void function called first. It's also gonna have to tell the iterator to go to the next player. 
So this can just be next. It's also going to have to ask the iterator if there's any other players left to traverse. So this can just be a bool for has next. So if it does have more players to traverse, this will return true. Otherwise, it'll return false. And then finally, we're going to have to get the current player that the iterator references. So this can just be current. So now that we've defined the player iterator, we're going to have to get it. And the way we get the player iterator is asking the collection to provide it. So this iterate function is going to get an I a player iterator by asking whatever player collection it has to create one. So we can just add a function to I a player collection called create player iterator. So we're gonna have to generate that on our I player collection interface. So there we go, that's generated now. So now that our I player collection interface has this function, our team and league classes are going to have to implement it. So let's start off with team. Let's implement the create player iterator function. And of course, this is gonna have to return some kind of iterator. So let's implement an iterator that'll be used for this team class. So let's add a new item here. We'll call this the team player iterator. And let's implement our I player iterator interface here. And if we wanna iterate over a team, First, we're going to have to actually get the team passed into our iterator. So let's do that. We're going to have a read-only field for the team we want to iterate. And we can just get that passed through the constructor. So another thing we're going to need is the current position we are in traversing the team. So we can just track that with an integer for the current index we're at with our iteration. So we just call this current index. And with that, implementing these other methods makes more sense. So first, of course, we're going to set the current index to zero. So basically setting the iterator to the beginning. And then next is going to increment the current index. So we can just do a plus plus. Then for has next, we want to compare against the length of our player's array. So we want to check if the current index is less than our player's array length. So we'll take our team player's array length. And we also want to subtract one from this because if we were just one less, than our player's array length, then that means we're at the end of the array and we actually do not have a next. So this minus one is quite important. And then finally, bringing it all together, current will just return the current index on the player's array. So just pass in current index there. And our iterator should be working as expected. So I do wanna test this out where we are right now. So I'm just gonna not implement the I player collection on our league at the moment. So there we go, just commenting that out. And now if we go back to our program.cs, we're just gonna pass in our team to this iterate function since that implements our I player collection interface. And now let's use our player iterator in this for loop. So the first thing we wanna do is tell our player iterator to go to the first item. And then we only wanna continue with our iterator if our player iterator has a next value. And then finally, after each loop, we want to tell our iterator to go to the next item. So we'll call player iterator.next. And then if we want to write out the current player, we can just use our player iterator again and get the current item. So now if we try this out, we should write out our three players. And we actually don't because I forgot to use our team player iterator in our team class. So right now we just have this not implemented exception but what we want to do is return a new team player iterator and pass in this team which is just literally this and looks like we only get two players written so this is probably a problem with our has next check so what happens in our for loop is at the end of our second to last iteration we call player iterator dot next which puts our iterator at the last item but then we check has next. And at this point, since we are on the last item, has next returns false and we end up not printing out the last item. So really all we have to do is go back and not do this minus one check. So let's remove that and this should all work now. So there we go. We print all three players and no errors, of course. But then has next isn't really describing what's happening here. Instead, this is really has current. So we can rename that there. And I've even seen some iterator implementations have some kind of is done method instead. And then in their for loop, 
they'll check if the iterator is not done. And I almost feel like that's more common. So I'm going to do that here. Let's make this is done. And we want to check if the player iterator is not done. So there we go with the exclamation point. And then we are done if the current index is greater than or equal to the array length. So let's try this again now. There we go, we still get all three players printed. So now, getting back to our main goal, I wanna print all the players in our league. So let's pass in our league to the iterate function, but league at the moment does not implement iPlayerCollection. Let's bring that back and implement that interface, which means we're gonna need some kind of league player iterator. So let's add that, a new class for a league player iterator. This will implement iPlayerIterator. So let's implement that interface. So similar to the team player iterator, we're gonna need our league passed in to the iterator. Let's generate a constructor for that. And this iterator is gonna be a bit more complex. So similar to the other iterator, we're gonna have to track which team we're currently iterating over. So we can have a current team index and then in this iterator we're also going to be iterating over all the players in a team so that being said we can use our team player iterator inside this iterator as well so we're going to reference the current team player iterator and we'll keep this up to date depending on which team we're currently iterating over so starting off with first of course we want to set the current team index to zero so setting the iterator to the beginning and then we want to set the current team player iterator to a new team player iterator passing in the current team that we're on so getting into our teams array and passing in the current team index which is zero so starting off with the first team but at this point we have to be careful because if our teams array had zero teams in it then this would give us an index out of bounds exception so we can just have a check here to make sure the current team index is less than the amount of teams in our array and if it is then we can initialize this iterator so now moving on to next this will be a little bit more complicated too so starting off our current team player iterator could be null if we didn't initialize it here so let's add a little null check here to make sure that if it is null, then we just return early from this function and do nothing. But then if we actually have an iterator, then we can take that and call next. But then we have to account for if this iterator is done, then we wanna move on to the next team and create an iterator for that. So first let's check if the current team player iterator is not done, because if it's not done, then we can just return out of this function and keep on going with our iteration. But if it is done, then we want to move on to the next team. So increment that index and then initialize another iterator for the team that we're on. So same thing as before, gotta have this guard as well so we don't go out of bounds on this array. So it is done, same kind of thing. We're gonna have to check if the iterator is null because if it is, then that means we're done with our iteration. But then if it's not null, then we can delegate to the current team player iterator and check if that's done. And then finally for current, this one is straightforward. We can just dig straight into our current iterator and get the current value. So now this iterator, a little bit more complex for sure, but getting into our league, let's make sure we return this new iterator and pass in this current league instance. So now back in our program.cs, our league is ready to print out. So let's pass that into our iterate function there we go and we should get all of the players in our league printed out to the console so here we go and there we go works just as expected so with that we've now implemented the iterator pattern from scratch so our iterate function now takes in an i player collection which could be either a team or a league but whichever one we have this function asks the player collection to get back some kind of iterator and then it uses that iterator to iterate through the players in either the team or the league. So whenever the player collection is a team, it gets back this team player iterator to iterate through the team. And then if it's a league, we get back this league player iterator to iterate over the league. So now that you know how to create iterators from scratch, you can really apply these concepts to any language, but in C-sharp specifically, it's actually much easier to do any of this using yield return. So with yield return, ultimately what we wanna do is use a for each and get each 
player in our player collection and then simply write out that player to the console. But at the moment we can't do this because iPlayer collection doesn't expose a get enumerator function. So if we head into iPlayer collection, we want this to implement i enumerable and we want to enumerate over players. So we want this to be an i enumerable for players and we no longer want to use iterators now. Although actually I'll leave it here just so that you can see it in source control. So now back into our team, we want to implement i enumerable for players. So let's implement that interface. So for this non-generic function, this is just used to support iteration over a non-generic array. So for this, we can just delegate to the get enumerator function above. And now for get enumerator, we could actually iterate over all the players in our players array and then do a yield return on each player. But in this case, since we're using this players array, which already implements I enumerable, we can just use that here and delegate to it. So we can take our players array and just return its enumerator. Although, whoops, this uses the non-generic get enumerator. But in this case, we could just convert our players to a list and then call get enumerator on that. And since list is generic, it'll return the generic enumerator as well. So now moving up to league, let's enumerate over this. So let's implement that interface. And same thing as before, we want to delegate to the generic get enumerator. And now in here, we want to use yield return. So first we want to iterate over each team in our teams array. And then we want to iterate over each player in the team. And then we just want to do a yield return on the player. But basically each time we call yield return on a player, our for each loop will write that to the console. And then once we're done with all these for each loops, we'll be done with the for each in our iterate function. So let's put a breakpoint here and step through this. So here we go, hitting yield return on our first player. And we write that out to the console. Then we continue iterating onto our next player, write that out to the console, and so on. So by the end, we've still written out all of our players. The difference is that we did not need any of this iterator stuff. So we did not even need the iPlayer iterator interface or any of these quirky functions. And we didn't have to implement an iterator for each of our different collections. So highly recommend using yield return if you're in C sharp. But aside from that, hopefully you can apply the iterator pattern to your own application so that you can traverse various different collections without having to understand their underlying representations. But if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.